Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. My name is Gronya and thanks for joining me. So guys, today I'm finally getting around to a job that I have actually wanted to do for months and I just never seem to be able to get the time. So here I have a staghorn fern. Now I've had the staghorn fern for about three years. So you can see here, if you can see this here, this is called the sterile frond. This has matured lovely on this plant. So when you buy these and they're, they're in their infant stage in the garden centers, quite often they don't have this. Do you see it? It's like, whoop, I'm spilling soil here. It's almost like a little skirt that, that covers up the dirt. And then this is the fertile frond. So this is the part of the staghorn fern that will grow. So typically, these are epiphytes. So typically they do grow on the side of a tree. So they would actually, this would be their natural position for growth. And of course we just stick them in pots. So this one has been crying out to be mounted for quite some time, as you can see. So I was buying the live edge wood for my, my dining room, which I showed you in a previous video. And they had this, isn't this beautiful? Now I've actually just put some linseed oil on it guys, just to bring out the color. Um, it's actually beautiful at the back as well. I mean, I could actually mount it either side, but I just thought this would be more natural for the fern. I'm sure it would like it better. So I am going to mount it on here. Guys, I love DIY and I'm always kind of looking for different ways to do things. And I just, ha I have this, which is like, it's like a plastic fencing. And I had it in the basement and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. So you know, it's, it's like the stuff that our onions comes in, right? So I thought I'm gonna try this when mounting my staghorn fern. I do also have some fishing line, but the one I have is very thin. It's like, um, it's a six, pa six pound, like it's, it's really very fine. So I thought I'd be like, I'll be, I don't know if you can even see how fine it is. I just thought, you know what? I'm go I think I need something a little bit stronger. So, I am going to try using some of this to hold, hold the plant and the moss in place. I'm just going to use some paper towel uh, to take off some of the linseed oil. I, it, most of it has been absorbed, but it was very hard to put the linseed oil on here. So I'm just going to take off the excess. And I'm going to use eye hooks to hold the cord in place. So I have them here and I have a drill. So actually I need to kind of, so this is my dilemma guys. Uh, do I put it over this beautiful piece or will I stick it kind of in the middle so you get to see a little bit of it? Naturally you would say put it here but look at how gorgeous it is. So I think I might just offset it just a little bit so you still get to see some of the beautiful black walnut. So I see how wide it's going to be. So I'm going to take my little eye hooks and I'm going to get my drill and I'm going to make a little pilot hole in the wood. Well at least that is the plan. <laughs> Let's hope it works. Okay, so go this way. I'm going to put my piece in okay. so I have my drill bit in where will I start okay so actually I made one pilot hole there guys and I wasn't even uh, I didn't even have the camera uh, in the right place so now I'm going to put another pilot hole here I think another one here that's a little bit actually I'm gonna stick the screw there because I don't think I'm gonna know where I did that Switch one over here Okay, 
and another one here. So let's screw these in. If you had a, a you know a flat piece of wood, a bit of cedar or something, you could go straight through, make a hole, and but because this wood is so thick, that's why I'm using these little guys. Now, I have my sphagnum moss here and I have it soaking in water. So I'm going to start off with just a little amount on the bottom and then I will tuck the rest in in the edges. So let me give this a good squeeze. And I'm going to just lay some down here to lay the actual staghorn fern on. Maybe another little bit. Now you will need to be able to either take this off the wall and give it a good soaking when it dries out or spray it. And because I'm hanging this in my dining room, I'm going to need to be able to take it off the wall. So, of course, I'm putting the cart before the horse. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to hang it yet and probably should have done that before I started this. But as I am impatient and I wanted to do this video, I am doing it, as we would say in Ireland, arse about face. But anyway, <laughs> we will get there. My hubby will come to the rescue on that issue for me. I probably will put two more maybe little hooks here and put a bit of wire and have it just hanging that way. So this is the, the direction I want it to hang in. Now I'm just going to push all this aside for the moment because we're now going to take my fern out of its pot. So it's been in this pot for quite a while guys. So I'm hoping that it's it should be very well rooted. So let's just try and ease this out without disturbing it, its roots too much. There we go. Okay, so you will see that the roots, they're very fibrous on staghorn ferns. So I'm going to remove as much of the soil as I possibly can. And now, I don't know if you can see, do you see here? how this is all very compact and it is, as I said, those fibrous roots. Can, I don't know if you can get a, an idea of them. So they're, they're quite firm. So I'm gonna take away, you can see all the sterile fronds under there. You can see, so they turn brown. Don't ever pull them off, guys. Even if they turn brown, you're gonna be tempted to. Don't pull them off. New ones will grow over it and eventually the fronds will cover all of the sphagnum moss. So you can see there's a couple of layers of fronds in there. So now I've taken off as much of the soil as I think I will need to take off. And now I just have a very firm root ball. So what are you going to do then? Guys, you're going to go in underneath and you're going to break it open like this. You're going to spread it out because you want to make it as flat as possible. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So I'm breaking it open. Now, if you don't have um, as many roots on yours, you may not, it might be easier for you to spread it out, but I'm just breaking it open there. And th these are actually, I'm just gonna take those big pieces off. So now, can you see what I have done? I have spread it out. So now, sorry, I didn't mean to make a mess. I should have been watching what I was doing. Now we're going to take our piece of board and our sp sphagnum moss. And we're just gonna take our fern. Now, sorry, there's somebody at my door. I shall be back. Okay, guys. Uh, I made a balls of that. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize my camera ran out of battery and I'm yapping away and now realize I have no footage. So I'm now in my pajamas and I'm taking it apart again. <laughs> I'm not going to take it fully apart guys because it's just too stressful. Um, so I'll actually know I need to do I need to take it apart because how else am I going to show you guys how to do it? Okay, I had it wrapped just perfect and now I'm gonna to have to take it apart and show you guys again 
and I'm in my pajamas because after I finished it, I went upstairs and said, okay, now I'm gonna relax, get into my pajamas. I ordered a pizza, I'd have a bottle of wine, and I thought, you know, I'll edit it tomorrow. And that just put a kibosh on my day. So here again, look at the old fronds under here, guys. So we're gonna pretend that we have started from the beginning. And you can see, I probably got a little too brutal with the roots, guys, but you know what, they're, they're tough enough plants. So I'm gonna push all of this aside, guys. And you can even see, I put extra um, hooks here and I put some leather strapping on it that I just bought in Dollarama. And I did actually put in an extra hook so where was I? Where can I, what can I tell you? Okay guys, so let's just start from the beginning. So this was in a pot. I'm gonna leave all that part in. And I took it out of the pot because these are epiphytes and they like to hang. So this has its fronds. You can see it's mature. I've had it for three years. And I actually, I didn't realize I took so much root off it, guys, I shouldn't have. So what I, what you do is, I will see, I think I might have some of that footage. You get in underneath and you're going to spread out the roots. You're going to flatten them. And then you're going to mount it on your board. So my board is going to mount this way. So what you need to do is, you're going to look, so this is the male frond or the, the sterile frond. And this is the female frond or the the, the fertile frond and if you look in here you can see new little babies coming so they have a tendency that they like to hang down okay you're going to take some sphagnum moss or you can put a bit of soil in there if you want to um but i'm oh look i've all this wire in here <laughs> so annoying so annoying oh anyway let me try and take out this not not wire guys it's um it's fishing line okay so I'm going to try and get some sphagnum moss that doesn't have any fishing line in it and you're going to make a little base for it like I say if you have soil and you want to put a bit of soil in it you can so I'm going to take our staghorn fern and we're going to mount it with the so the so the, the the staghorns they like to go down right so you can they say if you look in here you can see the new babies and you see what way they're growing but we can see that the new babies have a tendency to grow down this way so this is the way they like to grow so i'm just going to sit that on the sphagnum moss okay guys you've probably heard that there's a grand prix going on in the background so i decided i'd better voice over so i'm taking my wet sphagnum moss and i'm just packing it up the sides of the staghorn fern so i wet some more sphagnum moss and i'm just going to give it a really good squeeze guys get as much water as you can out of it now unfortunately i gave this staghorn fern a really good soaking after i had it mounted you can actually see on the sterile frond um, a little bit of it is over wet so I may lose that part of it but hopefully it will survive oops sorry I just dropped something okay so I'm packing up the sides and in underneath the sterile frond to make sure that um, it's well covered with sphagnum moss <laughs> I had some of this down in my basement. It's like, um, it's a plastic mesh that you could use in the garden for like fencing or something like that. And it's also the type of stuff that comes on your onions, you know, the bag of onions you get from the store. So I decided I was going to try this and it worked really well. So I took a piece of it and I know it's hard to see my arm is in the way a little bit there. And I just wrapped it around the plant. I'm just cutting off the excess and you'll see that I just kind of overlap it and I kind of try and tuck it in a little bit. It just means you have to use less fishing line, guys. Um, and it actually did work very well. I'm going to try this actually when I'm doing my moss poles. So you can see I'm pulling it down and I am tucking it in. And you will see afterwards. I do still wrap it all in fishing line, but I think it cuts down on the amount of fishing line you need to use. So now that I have that secured, 
I am going to get my fishing line. This is a very thin fishing line, guys. You should use a higher gauge. I think this this was only like six pound. I bought it in Dollarama. So I would advise you to get a heavy, heavier gauge as it was not only was it probably not strong enough, but it was a nightmare to see it because it was so fine. So you can see here, I'm putting it in through one of the eye hooks and I'm going to tie a knot in it. And then I'm going to start, I think at this point I wrap it and then I will crisscross it over and back around the sphagnum moss. So let's see what I do here. I can't remember. Oh yeah, I'm putting it through all the eye hooks actually, just to get it secure. And then I start wrapping it. I'm speeding the footage up here, guys, because um, I, you know, it, it, it actually it takes me such a long time to tie the knots because it's so fine. So what I do is I'm just kind of um, smoothing out the mesh to make sure that it's covering all the sphagnum moss. And then I just wrap it all, wrap the fishing line all around the sphagnum moss. And then once I've done that, I start crisscrossing it. So from one eye hook to the other eye hook and tying it off. And this just gives it that little bit more security. So I, can you see there? Yeah, so I mo a lot of the time here is probably wasted <laughs> try trying to tie knots. But you can see there, I hope, that I am wrapping it around the sphagnum. Okay guys, so this is where I start to crisscross it. So I tie it onto one of the hooks and then I drag it over the top, loop it through another hook and until I've almost run out of the uh, fishing line and then I tie it off again. So there it is mounted. I'm just going to turn it around now and you'll see actually when I shake it how secure it is. It's, it's nice and tight on there. It's not going to go anywhere and I am now going to get it ready to hang on my wall. What I will tell you guys is <laughs> My husband doesn't like it at all. He's not impressed with it. He says, that's so ugly. I do not, do not know what you like about this. But anyway, um, I'm pleased with the outcome. And I actually have hung it since doing the video in my dining room. And is it the prettiest piece of artwork right now? Maybe not. It looks a bit like a fascinator on somebody's head at a wedding. But uh, it will fill out. And when that frond grows all over that sphagnum moss, it is going to look spectacular. So I'm sticking with it, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> so here it is, guys, hanging on my wall. I actually kind of like it. So I know it will probably grow on him when the, when the sterile frond starts growing around it and it looks a little bit better. But it's here in my dining room with all my other beautiful babies and also where I am going to have my other piece of turn around, turn around I should say, um, live edge wood. So it's on the opposite wall to that. So let me know what you think guys. Let me know, would you or would you not hang this in your dining room? Is this something that you'd hang in a room that nobody else visits? <laughs> Uh, but I have to say I'm kind of pleased with it. Okay guys, so next day um, It never rains, but it pours so on Friday I had to get a new roof because we lost a lot of shingles in that wind storm that we had a couple of weeks ago and This morning I was just told I need a new furnace Couldn't happen at a worse time just before Christmas. So I want to thank you for joining me um, uh, My apologies that I had to voice over and that I am doing the video in my pajamas <laughs> I felt like Nigella Lawson. Anybody who knows Nigella Lawson, she is a British um, cook and she sometimes comes down in the middle of the night and cooks in her nightdress. So I was very aligned with a famous chef yesterday. But anyway, I, um, I hope that nobody is uh, bothered too much by that. And um, I want to ask you if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, that would be amazing. Let me know if you like it or not, guys. If you don't like it, Put a thumbs down in the comments if you like it put a thumbs up in the comments and guys if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel it would really help me out a lot and I want to thank you for, for joining me today and I also want to say a big thank you to those who have already subscribed and those of you that follow me you guys have a wonderful day take care